I, I, I want Pushparaj to respond. Pushparaj, in a way, Rahul Gandhi trying to reinvent the Congress, he will, in a sense, have to become almost... Rahul Gandhi will have to uh, be ready to become dispensable for the Congress to transform. He wants to transform what has been a party of power into an ideological party that takes on Hindutva. But to do that, he will also have to perhaps give way, because otherwise it will be seen as a dynastical party. If Rahul Gandhi truly wants to reform the Congress, he will almost have to become a victim of his own reform process. That's very well put, actually, Rajdeep. I just want to remind you and all your viewers that it has been five years since Rahul Gandhi has held a party post. Right? It takes but he time. he still runs the party. No, he that's not true. He still runs the party. Let us, let us all, no, 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 that's not true at all. On. That is not true at all. One second, let, Rajdeep, let, me, let me respond to this. Please check the record of the number of CDC meetings that have been held in the last one year, the number of CWC meetings. How many times has Rahul Gandhi intervened in the CEC? Let us not here collectively pretend to know what are the inner workings of the CEC of the Congress party. We don't. He is not dictating it. Let me emphasize that Malikarjun Kharge is the Congress president. KC Venugopal is the general secretary organization. The reform that you are alluding to that the, uh, Rahul Gandhi must initiate has already happened. My submission to you, with all due respect and to all, your, uh, all our fellow panelists, is that we are all a victim of the past. We are all seeing the Congress party as it was in the 1980s, in the 1970s. That culture is over. There is a new culture in town. And the fact of the matter is the decisions, it, this reform process, Rome wasn't built in a day. Rashid, the Congress Rashid, also, is even there the really a new party, is, is not going to be built in a day. Okay. Rashid, is there a really a new culture? You know the Congress in a working. Is there really a new culture away from the chamchagiri, the psychophancy? Is there a new culture that will reward merit, that will ensure... You know, you can criticize the BJP for all you want. They've had a half a dozen party presidents uh, over the last 20 years, each of whom have been given some space. You, you can say Narendra Modi dominates the show, but Sandeep, everybody knows of a JP Nadda, and over the last 20 years, they've had... Party presidents here. You had Sonia Gandhi for more than two decades. Has this party changed? Pushparaj is saying there is a new Congress out there. But I think the real problem is that Congress does not know how to deal with the failure of a Gandhi. There is no precedent, so they do not know how to deal with it. So they just keep on. Gandhi's problem is that you started in the beginning of the program, but uh, you know, with that. Uh, uh, election speech of Priyanka Gandhi, where she makes a very good point and a very emotional one, I would say, about, uh, you know, Rajiv Gandhi getting shahadat in Barasat. But the fact of the matter is that people at this point of time, many voters, I would say, they don't connect, uh, you know, uh, themselves with Ra with Rajiv Gandhi's that kind of legacy. They remember uh, Rajiv Gandhi more for, because you and me, we have covered part of our Rajiv Gandhi's tenure, it had some very good features in terms of uh, advancement of science, technology, etc., modernization. But the other side of Shabano, of, you know, opening clock of Babli Masjid, uh, the misadventure of this, of uh, Ram Jila movie, Babli Masjid dispute, uh, misadventure in, in Sri Lanka, all these things are there. So it doesn't connect. While, you know, what Priyanka was speaking, I, I thought it was a very good speech, but whether it translates into votes, that is not happening and that's a real problem. That, the Congress is not finding a kind of, you know, socio-economic agenda where it can attract voters. You know, is Raul Verma, as someone who tracks these uh, political trends, that India, you know, we are told India has changed, especially the Hindi heartland, that the rise of Hindutva, and this is not just post-2014, uh, uh, this has been building since the last 30 years has made the Congress irrelevant to large parts of North India. First, they lost the social justice Mandal constituency, and then Mandir came in, and the co combination of Mandir and Mandal in a Narendra Modi has meant space has got squeezed out. It's not about Rahul Gandhi, just the space. India has changed in terms of the political space now occupied by a party like the BJP. That is true. Uh, you know, Congress in that sense, over the last 50 years, has been a party in decline. Yes, it managed to form government between 2004 and 14 and got the highest majority in uh, 1984. But even when it gave, came back to power in 1980 after uh, 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 the Janta Party government by nine, uh, between 1977 and 1980, there were cracks in the co Congress coalition uh, and uh, people who were writing about politics then have written about this. And so what you started seeing in 90s when the socialist and backward caste, caste parties came to being, uh, Congress actually uh, uh, starts losing. And there are some facts about Congress Party, as uh, uh, Rashid Bhai mentioned one of those facts. Let me say a couple of facts. 
Congress party, once it moved to second or third position in any state, it has never revived. Once Congress party goes below 20% vote share, it never revives in those states. So Congress, so far, and I'm not saying it won't happen in future, so far has not shown signs of revival in any state where it has moved to third position. And I can start listing states from Tamil Nadu and West Bengal, which lost, uh, got lost in 70s, then UP and Bihar, which right. got lost in 90s, right? So, so Congress, in some ways, does not know route to revival. And the route to revival, it appears, Pushparaj, that the Congress is pushing is inequality, suggesting that India is an unequal country at the moment, targeting uh, the so-called crony capitalists, the oligarchs. Is that Rahul Gandhi's recipe for revival, both for himself and the party? Redefine the Congress as a party left of center that stands up, they say, to the so-called uh, uh, crony capitalists. Is that his recipe? Because on the other side, the BJP is very clear. We can call it, uh, you know, Ashutosh says it's the most polarizing communal uh, uh, politics, but the fact is it is unapologetically Hindutva. What does the Congress stand for today? No, so one thing I want to address in what you were saying, Rajiv Ji, that Hindutva happens to be anti-Muslim and anti, uh, it's communal, it's, uh, it's uh, pro-sproveni capitalism, it's not. Hindu doesn't, Hinduism does not teach us that. The Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb, the Vasudev Vasude Kutumbakam does not teach us that. So let's get that very, very, let's what get What does Rahul Gandhi with. stand for? Rahul Gandhi stands for his party's manifesto. If you see the party's manifesto, it addresses the needs and aspirations of at least 90% of the India, India's population. And it has a plan for the last 8% of the population. What he's saying is there has to be equitable access and opportunities to the promise of this nation. That is what he stands okay. for. I, I will give Rajat Sethi a final word. Is Rahul Gandhi still the perfect opponent for Modi or, and the BJP or are you underestimating him? Is there a sense through this election that you've seen Rahul Gandhi through the prism of 2014 and 19? Maybe there's a different Rahul Gandhi in 2024. Every shred of my being repels a dynast. A dynast and democracy cannot go hand in hand. If a Microsoft or an Apple were handed over to Steve Jobs' son, those companies would have been finished off. Innovation requires pores, pores where fresh air can get in, give a whole new, uh, you know, a new outlook. The party right now struggles because it lacks imagination. Okay. It lacks imagination because Rahul Gandhi, you know, is Mia ki Dor Masjid tak, he goes picks up certain leftist ideas, copies them and tries pasting them here. Okay. They lack genuinity. They lack proper groundedness. If you do not allow Congress's ground leaders to come out who have lived the reality of what this India aspires for, what does this India stand for, you will have these cut, copy, paste okay. ideas. I, I, I've come virtually it's to the end. Leader. Asutosh, you're raising your hand. I will give you 20 seconds and you've been a TV person, so only 20 seconds. No, Rajdeep, I have to say only one thing. If we are celebrating the polarizing communal campaign and feeling proud about Hindutva, which is, which is, which is demonizing a particular community, God forbid such kind of narrative and such kind of fellow travelers of the Hindutva. Okay, let me leave it there. I think it's been fascinating listening to all these viewpoints. It's strange that even though Rahul Gandhi may not have succeeded electorally in 2014 and 19. The fact is, he's still talked about, he's still debated. And the fact is that we are still anticipating will he contest, will he contest or not? Now, that can be interpreted in various ways. But the truth is that the Congress remains in some ways the grand old party.